Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good evening. How are you today? Welcome back to my channel. Cikgu Fazli Bayu Sensei. Today you will learn new chapter, new topics in KSSM SPM Biology Syllabus. Okay, our topic for today is about join. Let's learn together. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Saya Cikgu Fazli Bayu Sensei Jangan lupa subscribe channel saya tendons, ligaments, synovial membrane, and synovial fluid. Okay, so our learning standard for today is, the first one is to state the types of joint in the human skeletal system. And number two, draw, label, and explain the human forearm hinge joint structure. First of all, what do you know about joints? What are joints? So, joints are points where two or more bones meet or cartilage and bones meet together. That is the meaning of joint. So, how many joints, how many types of joints did you know? So, let's look at this uh, diagram. There are three types of joints. They are immovable joints. Slightly mobile joints and freely movable joints. Okay, for immovable joints, the bones are held together by a fibrous connective tissues, which is this type of joint. There are no movement between the bones. Okay, for example, skull and pelvic girdle. Okay, this type of uh, the function of this immovable joint is to protect urogenital organs and also support body. This one is for pelvic either. And then for skull, it's to protect delicate tissues of brain and all the sense organs inside the skull. So this is the example of immovable joints. So for hip, uh, so for pelvic girdle, there are three bones joined together which is the red color is deep bones and then the yellow color is sacrum and the blue color is coccyx so these three bones are cannot move immovable and then for our skull uh, the cranial bones are connected by sacha okay so sacha is a type of immovable joint so our uh, skull bones cannot be moved. The other type of joints uh, is partially movable joints. So this type of joint, the bones is bridged by the cartilage at the joint. So this type of joint, uh, the movement is restricted and can be moved in some degree of flexibility. For example, for example, vertebral column, which is the bone between vertebra bones, are bridged by cartilage disc. The function of cartilage is as a shock absorber to cushion the joint and reduce friction between the vertebra. So this is the example of partially movable joints, which is human vertebra. So each vertebra bone is connected by intervertebral disc. This intervertebral disc is made up of cartilage to reduce friction between two bones and also act as shock absorber. So the third type of 
joints is freely movable joint. Okay, so this type of joint is uh, the end of the bone. They are articulating, which is covered by cartilage. Okay, and then this joint is enclosed by joint capsule, and it is lined with a thin synovial membrane, which secretes synovial fluid. This is the picture of um, freely movable joint, which is this this part we call it as capsule, which is consists of fibrous tissues that encloses and provides protection to the joint. And then this part is cartilage. This one is cartilage. Okay, so this cartilage is act as cushion and absorb shock, reduce friction between bones and protect the bones from wearing out. And then synovial membrane, the red color, is function to secrete synovial fluid to the synovial cavity. And then the function of synovial fluid is act as lubricant to reduce the friction between these two bones. Freely movable joint can be divided into two types, which are hinge joint and ball socket joint. The example of hinge joint are knee, elbow and finger joints. This type of joint only allow movement in one plane, okay, one way. Okay, number two is ball and socket joint. This type of joint is allow movement in all plane and some rotational movement. For example, our shoulder. Okay, our shoulder can move up, down, round. Okay, and also our hip joint. Okay, let's study this diagram. What are A, B, and C? Can you identify what is A? B and C. Okay, correct. A is bone, B is tendon, and C is skeletal muscle. Okay, now try this diagram. Can you identify what is P, Q, R, S, and T? So P is ligaments. Q is skeletal muscle, which is bicep. R is tendon. S is skeletal muscle, which is tricep. And T is scapula. So, in this part, you will learn about three things. Okay. The first one is about ligaments. Number two, about tendons. And number three, about skeletal muscle. What are ligaments? What are tendons? What are skeletal muscle? Okay, so tendon is a very strong, inelastic, non-stretchable collagen fibers, which is appear as glistening silver gray strand between the muscle and the bone. So the function of tendon is to connect the bones with the muscle. And then, its main function is to ensure that the force produced by the contraction of muscle is transmitted to the parts of the body to be moved. So what are ligaments? Ligaments are tough and strong connective tissues and elastic. And then the function is con to connect bone to bone, which is allow the movement of bone at a joint. It's also uh, important in preventing dislocation between the bone at the joint. Okay, so let's make comparison between tendons and ligaments. Okay, let's make a comparison between uh, tendon and ligaments. So the similarities between tendon and ligaments are both uh, tissues are made up of collagen fibers and then these two type of tissues have 
similar function which is to hold two types of tissue together. But the difference is tendons connect bone to muscle and ligament connect bone to bone. And then tendon has no elastin tissues but ligaments contain or has elastin tissues which is cause the ligament to become elastic and tendon in elastic because uh, the elastic tissues is absent. So this is the last part of this uh, video. It's about the skeletal muscle. What are skeletal muscle? Skeletal muscle is comprises of bundle of muscle fibers with a large supply of nerve and blood vessel. So the action of muscle will bring about a movement to the bone. Skeletal muscles are work antagonistic. What is the meaning of antagonistic? Antagonistic muscle means the muscle work in opposition. For example, bicep and tricep. Okay, so one contract and another one will relax. So muscle can contract and relax and muscle also can pull on the bones but cannot push. Okay, so the muscle only have ability to pull the bone but cannot push. Okay, so the muscle that uh, can pull the bone and cause the bone to become straightened, we call it as extensor. And then the muscle that can bend a limbs or the bones, we call it as flexor. When the muscle contract, it causes the limbs become straightened, we call it extensor. And then the muscle that contract and cause the limb to bend, we call it as flexor. Okay, so we have finished the second subtopic of chapter 14, which is 14.2 it's about muscular skeletal system of humans so don't forget to test yourself uh, in the google form provided in the description thank you for watching and just wait for my another video